Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD broadcast studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News. I'm Cody Johnson reporting news from around the Columbia Basin for Thursday, May 30th. Tonight we report on a body found in the Moses Lake sand dunes and how Sonico is going to have to relocate their business. We also look at Quincy's choice for a temporary police chief and how the Navy is cleaning up a source of radiation in Seattle. In sports, we'll take a look at the fallout of racial comments made at the PGA Tour. And a new lawsuit has been filed against the NCAA by the family of the late Joe Paterno. Our spotlight story tonight is about graduation, not by high school students, but by high school students. And we've got the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the iFiber One Weather Center. Our top story tonight, the body of a man was discovered in the Moses Lake sand dunes on Tuesday. Chetu Park, a 58-year-old Fife man, apparently died of natural causes on Sunday. Grand County Coroner Craig Morrison said, following the, the investigation, foul play has been ruled out. Following the examination, the cause of death has been ruled as natural. A passerby discovered the body sitting in a vehicle in an isolated area of the dunes and nothing appeared to be missing from the vehicle. Time is not on the side of Sonico, an aircraft service and repair company based at the Port of Moses Lake. In February, port officials requested the company find a new home and vacate the World War II era building within six months. Sonico currently leases five buildings at the port, but only Hangar 408 was deemed deficient by engineers who completed two structural assessments, the first in 1998 and the second in June of 2012. Port of Moses Lake Commission Chair Kent Jones said, repairing the 27,500 square foot building isn't an option. Structural repairs alone would cost an estimated $60,000. And if needed, utility upgrades were figured in. He said the cost of refurbishing could easily reach 1 million. Jones said it's not financially feasible to fix it, and even if it was, we've had contractors say they can't do it, can't do the repairs while Sonico is in the building, so it doesn't solve anything. People driving through the Rocky Ford Creek area may have noticed some unusual activity along the highway. Here with the story is Spencer Graham. Drivers passing by Rocky Ford Creek on State Route 17 will see one of the Grant County PUD's largest current projects. A 35-mile-long, 230-kilovolt transmission line is being installed stretching from the Columbia Basin substation to the Rocky Ford substation. The PUD project has been in the planning stage since a series of public meetings was held in 2009 and is expected to be complete in mid-January of next year. To make the installation process safer and faster, a helicopter is used to tow the line through pulleys so that a line crew doesn't have to manually pull it from the ground. This process is much more efficient and requires less manual labor. The process involves removing the old wooden poles that have seen much wear and tear over the years and replacing them with new steel ones. A total of 239 steel structures will be needed to complete the project that will cover about 10 acres of land. All property rights have been obtained to complete the project. PUD officials say that the roughly $38 million project will increase the capacity to deliver more electricity to customers and will increase stability and reliability in the system. For iFiber One News, this is Spencer Graham reporting. Thanks, Spencer. The 2013 Moses Lake Roundup Rodeo and Demolition Derby are still on. Columbia Basin Rodeo Association Director Doug Rathbone said, the events are going forward as the association waits for the outcome of an evaluation of two-thirds of the seating at the rodeo arena. The demo derby is scheduled for August 14th, and the rodeo is scheduled for August 15th through the 17th. 
Four sets of bleachers are closed at the moment as the county awaits the report from Wenatchee-based Pacific Engineering and Design. The structural engineer is expected to review the bleachers on June 3rd. Bleachers were closed earlier in the month following a report that suggested the bleachers not be used until they could be examined by a structural engineer. The company cited concerns about holes in the fences, the footing slipping off the concrete blocks, rotting, broken or splintered boards, metal spacers which had moved, a, a missing handrail and other issues. Greg Meinzer is stepping in as Quincy's interim police chief. He is a former Chelan County undersheriff and pre presently a security supervisor at Central Washington Hospital. Meinzer was appointed by the city council to fill in the position of police chief until a new one can be selected. He previously served as interim police chief for six months following the retirement of Chief Bill Gonzalez and selection of, a chief, of chief Richard Ackerman. Ackerman and Captain Jean Fretheim were terminated without cause on Friday. Mayor Jim Hembury did not give a reason for the decision, simply saying they were at will employees and he didn't need to give a reason. Hembury picked Meinzer because he filled in before and when the department was having some difficult times. Each of the people you see here have warrants for their arrest and are wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DOC asks you not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day, or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after these messages with the latest from the iFiber One Weather Center, and we've got sports and more news on the way.